Ages ago, I did a, one of my first watch reviews of my Alpina Sea Strong Diver. Looking back, it's not something I really am that proud of. So I've had another go and here's my critique of that same watch. Hi, welcome back to Not So Obvious Watches. I'm Pete McConville. Like I said, really short intro here. This is my critique of the Alpina Sea Strong Diver. Let's get into it. Okay, so now let's just get into this review of the Alpina Sea Strong Diver. A quick one on the situation here. This is my watch. I've owned it for about three years now. This was also one of the very first reviews I did when I started the channel, which is a shame because that review is still quite popular, but I don't like it. I've been, I've had this watch for longer. I've been in the hobby for longer and I've been doing YouTube longer now. So I think I can do a better job. Um, I'm not going to kill the old one, so you can compare the two and let me know if you think I've got better or worse. Really quick one about this watch in particular. It is, as I say, the Alpina Sea Strong Diver. Its reference number is AL525G4TS6 if you're interested. This model was created or introduced around about 2010. There have been some updated versions, but I believe if not this exact watch, a very, very minor version version update of this is still available. Case material is steel, aluminium bezel, sapphire crystal, 300 meters water resistance, screw down crown. Comes with a time and date. The movement's an SW200 base with some minor decoration. Um, the case is a squared off cushion. The dial is a flat matte black dial with applied indices. 49 millimeters lug to lug for those concerned about fit and msrp for this watch is around about 1200 us dollars you'll normally have to pay around 900 to buy this new as you can see a big flat dial with a with a dead flat crystal with excellent ar on both sides so you can dive deep into the well and see what's going on that that dial is perfectly matte and very deep it's incredibly simple with no nonsense indices it could come across as a bit spartan but i think there's enough going on to stop this from being dull super high contrast markers with brilliant white loom sensors all emphasized with these highly polished boundaries, give the markers a real 3D effect, probably an outsized 3D effect given their size. An excellent date integration, hides away when you don't want to see it, pops into life when you do. All in all, it has this really clean, lean look, edges towards minimalism, but then takes a turn just at the last minute with just enough detail, just enough sparkle to be more than that. The build across the entire dial is very, very neat. Everything is clean. Everything is aligned. The printing is crisp. The font choices are nice and simple. There's no fluff, no scratches, no roughness. Moving to the case, as I said before, you've got a cushion case, but it's been sharpened up and bulked out. It gives it a really muscular feel, and there is a lot going on. The crown guards are there, but they're pretty minimal, probably so that you can main, maintain symmetry left to right across the case. There's a lot of there's a lot of shapes, and the shapes are almost all broken up with delicate chamfers and edging, and a mix of polished and satin finishes across the watch. Overall, I think it's really coherent. The shapes and the colors all work together really nicely. They provide a nice symmetry and a nice proportionate case. And all the shaping and finishing is quite subtle. What I would say, though, is I think it's that subtlety sometimes becomes just a bit soft. I think that the edges and the, tra the, edges and the transitions from surface to surface could be cleaner. I think whilst there is a mix of brushed and polished surfaces, like the edge transitions, these are all a bit muted. They needed to be, the polished areas needed to be more polished, the, the brushed areas needed to be more brushed to really bring this design home. I think the aluminium bezel insert was a brilliant idea. That dull finish that aluminium tends to give maintains the overall aesthetic of the dial and also, but with the color, provides a nice bridge to the more complex, more decorative case shaping. The bezel action is lovely. It's really smooth, but with a positive click. There's no play or bounce. 
Again, though, the bezel is not overly grippy, a bit like the case shaping, that edging that's been done, the grips are all just a little bit soft. They haven't quite nailed it. Now, a watch is not a painting that hangs on a wall. It's not a sculpture that sits on a plinth. Its natural place is on your wrist. When you think about the wearability of this watch, I think of it in two ways, the feel and the presence. Let's start with the feel. It's only 13 millimeters thick, which is not a thin watch, but for a 300 meter diver, especially at this price, that's pretty good. Really short, low set, and very aggressively angled lugs give it a really planted, secure feeling on the wrist. And combined with that slightly bulging case back, giving the case to mid case, the, the case back to mid case, a kind of a natural chamfer. It's very comfortable on the wrist and an easy easy watch to wear. In terms of presence, it's a 44 millimeter case. There's no getting around that. She's a big one. That matte dial and bezel do shrink it a bit, kind of stealth fighter style. But at the end of the day, this is going to take up a fair bit of real estate, and it's a big bold watch. So going beyond just the looks, now let's put the watch into some broader context. And within the Alpina brand especially, now Alpina is an interesting brand with a meandering and sometimes kind of tortured history, created in 1883, and it's always tried to keep this core ideal of affordability, of quality, and especially robustness. In the oldie days, they referred to this as the Alpinist spirit. They, in With the Alpina 4 back in the late 30s, Alpina nailed it. And they just continue that taking those ideas and that design, they did really well through the 40s, 50s, and early 60s. By the early 70s, like much of the Swiss watch industry, though, on the cusp of so much change, quartz, currency, design, things didn't quite work out. Like, every, like a lot of companies, Alpina started chasing trends, chasing capital, chasing sales, and in all of that, they lost focus. From the 70s, really through to about the early 2000s, Alpina dwindled. They remained on life support to about 2001. They were just about to die. And right at the last minute, Peter Stas from Frederick Constant swept in and saved the brand. And that was the best possible result for Alpina because what he needed was an affordable good quality, robust sports watch company to sit alongside Frederick Constant. And thus it was. Alpina was saved and reborn, really, in the, in the spirit of its best self. Um, and the Alpina Sea Strong Diver is intended to be a dive watch in that spirit. What Alpina says about this watch is it's supposed to have a design that privileges optimal dive time readability. It's supposed to have an essential and functional beauty. It's supposed to be a beautiful but masculine object. What's interesting is when Alpina talk about this watch, there's no mention of any kind of retro inspiration here. This is a very this is a thoroughly modern interpretation of very old Alpina values. You see that with the naming. It's just the sea strong diver no heritage no retro nothing in there interestingly in a bizarre way it's kind of very unmodern because it's missed the current trend of being neo vintage which is kind of curious so the question is has all of this worked with the design that we showed before has alpina got that functional masculine beautiful watch that they were after overall i'd say yes when Alpina were reborn in 2002 and, over and taken over by Frederick Constant, the first couple of years were pretty rocky. And you could see the problem in the watches in the names. They had all these very extreme ideas and avalanche, and, and it really looked like they were trying too hard. It's like too many people were watching the X Games and just going too hard, punching through masculine and ending up at kind of big moustache macho. What I think Alpina have done really well here is that they have kept the overt masculinity of the case with that big muscular squared off cushion, but dialed back the macho everywhere else. And I think that's worked wonders. What you've got is still clearly a dive watch. It's clearly a tool. Yes, it has been a little bit compromised by that by the missing minute track and those smaller crown guards. But at the end of the day, the case and the functionality and the overall legibility get you through. And working as a dive watch, 
almost automatically imbues the watch with that kind of essential masculine quality that, that Alpina were after. This is definitely a manly watch kind of intended for doing manly things. However, they've paired that with a care, with a restraint in the dial and the bezel. And they've also given it little flourishes of flash. Um, and I would also say that they've done the work, some hard engineering in keeping the watch relatively thin. All of those things have given the watch the beauty that Alpina was also after. It's not perfect though. As I said earlier, those bezel edges and case transitions are all just a little bit soft. I think like a modernist building, these sorts of shapes, the ultimate success relies on total commitment to the small details. And I think here you start to see the limitations on the design and build of this watch because of the budget. Similarly, mechanically, it's okay, but it's only okay. The Salida 200 movement is a, a really solid workhorse movement, and it suits, it suits what they're trying to do with this watch, and it's sufficient for where it's placed. But I think that's all you can really say, suitable and sufficient. It's not something which elevates, it doesn't really add anything to the watch. Overall, I would say that I think this is a strong design. It doesn't lean on any kind of neo-vintage trend. It doesn't lean on any kind of past designs. You could argue that the angularity is vaguely gentle inspired, but I think that's a bit unfair. I think we have this habit to just assume that every straight line is some sort of gentle inspiration. I'd be more inclined to see that these kind of straight lines and hard engines, edge angles have been used since the 70s by designers to indicate modernity in design. It, they're used as an indicator of a break with the more so, the softer and more organic designs of mid-century modern. So I, I think that, as I say, this is a very strong design that stands on its own, that largely achieves what it is that the designers have set out to do. So all in all, Alpina said that they wanted a functional dive watch with a strong masculine feel and real beauty out of the water. I think there's some areas where the budget hasn't quite stretched to deliver the complete package. I discussed those earlier. I think they are few and I think they are forgivable. So overall, I reckon Alpina succeeded with this watch. So that's it. Uh, that's my critique of the Alpina Sea Strong Diver. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got questions, leave them below. And my idea is in a couple of weeks, I'll do kind of like a part two or follow up to this, touching on anything which I didn't include because it wasn't important to me, but might be to you. And if this works, it's something I'll do sort of routinely. I'll do my critique and then a follow up with kind of the bits that I didn't talk about that might be of interest. Um, yeah, so anyway, if you do have questions, if you do have comments, leave them below and I'll get to them later. I've been Pete McConville. This has been Not So Obvious Watchers and I'll see you later. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.